to Melissa Hager TV. Thank you so much for joining me today. A special treat. I'm going to let you inside Ladies of the Comedy Series, a podcast that I'm actually a part of, and we do typically every single week, and uh, we are actually uh, doing a live recording right now, so I would love to show you. Uh, welcome my co-host, Abby and Adrian. Hello. All right, let's rock and roll, girls. Hey yo, hey yo. Right, hey. <laughs> All right. Hey, what's up? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Start again. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> let's just Are keep we going? going. Are we just you going? Know Look at how good we are at Zoom. Welcome to Ladies of the Comedy Series. Here we are, live, in person, trying our best to do whatever the hell it is we're doing here. Whatever it is. Lockdown 2020. <laughs> there's Adrian. There's Abby. Hi. Welcome, girls. Hi. Hello. Okay, so that's our, our attempt. We're trying to get live on Facebook. That's not working. Maybe it's just not the internet day for us. Maybe that's the case. <laughs> you just look too good for the internet, apparently. Apparently. It's, apparently. It's I'm just glad to be dressed. It's been a couple days. I'm not going to lie. I, uh, Me too. Yeah. I Me too. I think about it all day. day. <laughs> <laughs> I did a full face of makeup today. Even foundation. Not just like yeah. quick powder. I did foundation. Like, hey. This shit's legit. Yeah. <laughs> well we have a jam-packed show for all of you guys today we got a lot of stuff to talk about so let's just dive right in uh recently was easter that was Woo! really strange and i think honestly i think all three of us did easter quite differently and i think we yeah. should talk about that it was kind of it'd be yeah. kind of fun just because i think you know social media kind of gets you to believe like there's a certain way that you're supposed to do something and you're not you're not adequate if you don't do it that certain way so i think it's cool to talk about all the different ways that even just the three of us did easter agreed yeah we talk about it anyways and this was even more odd this year so why right not? exactly Adrian, I saw your kids unwrapping some chocolate bunnies, and uh, oh yeah, you guys. I think it was probably the best Easter that we've ever had. Honestly. Oh really? Why is that? Yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't have any expectation to go anywhere. We didn't have any um, reason to, you know, make it a big hoopla. Like it was just lit simple and easy and family fun, family related. It was great. Very it was good. nice to just sit at home with our kids and. Um, we had our own little Easter egg hunt, and we did our own little baskets, and we did a uh, church service on the phone, and just everything. It was great. Did you cook a big dinner? I did. We made um, ham and ham gravy and mashed potatoes oh. and uh, corn, and I made broccoli casserole. Ooh. Oh, oh, I like it. That sounds awesome. Well, yeah, okay. we we skimped out definitely. I mean, I guess I'm holding out on the hopes that we're getting together soon. And I I'm not gonna lie, I definitely upset um, some family. Uh, you know, outside of my children and husband, I upset some family because they were having a regular Easter dinner mm -hmm. like normal and assumed we were coming by and we wait, were wait, wait. not. Wait, so, they, they got together. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. I'm very so, proud of you for not going. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. Um, uh, several people within the family, like, still go out and about, still are what I would say is practicing safe distancing, at least not for the last two weeks, maybe for the last week, but not the last two weeks. And, uh, yeah. you know, Easter day, the weather was not awesome the whole day. So it, you, we couldn't guarantee that we could just stand outside and Anyway, so we didn't go, so there's like a little bit of tension in our family oh. right now, and I guess I just have hopes that we're getting together, like maybe yeah. even if it's a month, I figure we are getting together, so but maybe what? that's my fault, you no. know, recognition. No. no, girl, you, for one, they're not practicing what we're supposed to be doing. You're not, right. like, I don't, I admit, so like, because with, with my Easter, um, part of, one of the things I did on Saturday was... I, um, I ordered edible arrangements for my mother-in-law, father-in-law, like 
and my two sisters, because my mom's staying with my older sister right now. I'm sorry, I thought I turned off my sound. Um, and uh, so we delivered them, but we stayed very safe distance apart, you know, think, and you're not even really supposed to do that, mm -hmm. but there's no way I would have gone and physically bent. That's the, that's actually one of the problems they're having is people are still doing stuff like that right. and it's going to keep spreading. Right. Right. And it's, it's, Michigan is the third highest right now in COVID-19 numbers. Yeah. And whether you think that's legit or not, because obviously that's why my family or some of the family got together um, because they think that, you know, the news is brainwashing us and this stuff isn't legit and we're being lied to. I mean, the, I personally know people that are getting sick and almost dying. So right. it scares the living bejesus out of me. Like, no, I'm suspicious of everybody. Yeah. No, I think you have to be. You have to be. Yeah. And if, if you don't take it serious now, we will be going through the summer. Yeah. And not being able to get together. Right. right. So I'm going to take it serious now so I can actually have a summer. Personally. Well, and Abby, you let's talk about your Easter. I saw a picture of you like in an Easter dress. Well, I wore, um, usually like I buy a really cute Easter dress or something. Well, being that we've been on lockdown for a, well, for a month, I didn't buy anything. And I just went in my closet, which is what I should do anyways. And <laughs> that was actually a skirt I bought off Amazon for uh, my trip in Ari to Arizona in January. And I was like, perfect, it's so bright and fun. I lasted half a day in it. And be just because the boys got a basketball hoop from the Easter Bunny, and Ooh. yes, because they needed it badly. And um, their over the door hoop wasn't working much anymore. So uh, I was sitting outside watching them and I'm going, oh, it's cold. It's like, it was <laughs> My kids were in shorts and tank tops playing basketball because they were running around like crazy. But so, yeah, but we had a very uh, traditional, non-traditional Easter um, ourselves. Like we, and that's kind of why I dress up too, because we watched um, Notre Dame, their, same, their uh, basilica. We watched mass and I actually had homemade bread I made. I make a bunny bread every year for Easter. It's something my mom started years ago. And so I actually usually buy frozen bread, but this year I actually made homemade bread bread. Oh, so, yeah. So it was even more legit. And now I'm never going to buy frozen bread again because the bread recipe I found was so easy with my KitchenAid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we had bread from that. I even put out a little bit of wine. So I know it wasn't blessed, but it still gave good symbol. You know, it was a good symbol yeah. and everything. And so Aiden got to have a sip of wine, um, <laughs> being Catholic. And uh, so, yeah, so we had Matt, we did mass and it's so cute. Our, our kids actually, so they woke up and um, my parents always usually do an Easter egg hunt for the kids and that's not happening this year. So the Easter bunny decided it could happen at our house. So the kids actually got to egg hunt and, um, they got their Easter baskets and they also got a electric learning keyboard. So it was actually super cute. Keith was sitting at the keyboard the whole time during mass. And anytime the music played, he was playing like the organ section. Of it. it was just, it was really cute. It was adorable, but, but yeah, Memories. I mean, exactly. And uh, my family decided we wanted to do eat dinner over zoom. So we did that, which was really cool. That's um, a cool idea. It was a little yeah. odd at first and the kids kind of took over of things, but my mom really, really enjoyed it. And like my older, my little sister, it was her, her fiance was working because he's a firefighter EMT. And so it was just her and her daughter at the house. So she was like, it was so nice, like having more than just Lydia and I together. And, you know, each obviously had eight different things, but it was really, it was really special. It was definitely that, not our best Easter, but it's, it was definitely a special one that I'll never forget, you know, and yeah. we even zoomed, um, with my mom and her, her whole family. So her, she's got four siblings, so Very they cool. got to do all that. And that's the first time they've really talked and seen each other in person since this all started. So, um, I had family from Chicago, uh, my aunt's in Florida right now. So like there was a bunch of us on, it was really, it was, it was neat. So that's cool. Yeah. And I mean, anybody that's listening, I encourage you. I mean, if you found this 
and you're listening to this, you obviously are semi-familiar with technology. We've all been using Zoom a lot. I know Zoom, unfortunately, has been getting a lot of bad press this last couple of weeks, and I have not experienced any of the things that they're saying about Zoom, about people hacking in and exposing yeah. themselves and blah, blah. Like our school is using Zoom. I'm using Zoom personally for comedy shows. We're using Zoom for our podcast. We're using Zoom for friend conversation, hangouts. I'm like, using I have my workout class that I'm yeah, teaching. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I have not experienced anything. I, no. I hate that we have turned into this weird society that anytime something is doing good, excelling, there's always got to be this opposition that comes in and tries to take it down. But and I do admit, Zoom is on top of their game. They are security features, everything. They are coming right out. So, Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. It's a really good platform. And there's a lot of platforms out there too. I'm just... Oh yeah. Um, this is just the best one I have found personally, that the video is great. You know, the response, everything time. Cause I've tried Facebook messenger video with multiple people, even just one person. And I'm like, wait, you're, you're paused. Hold on. And yeah. I have really good yeah. internet. So yeah. And you can't hear it all of a sudden. Right. It's yep. And you're like, all right. So the face is froze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always in a weird position. You just have the face. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we definitely want to give a shout out to our nurses and our doctors that are out there working the front lines and uh, making sure to keep all of us safe. I know, I know a couple women and men personally that are out there busting a move and uh, the stuff yeah. they're experiencing right now. It's very strange. It right. is. But you know what? I, yeah. I don't know what I was going to say. Well, thankful, <laughs> thankful for them to do that because I'm sure they did not sign up for that when they started right. their career. But, exactly. But yeah, is, this uh, is never, in our generational or even my, our parents' generation's time, nothing like this has ever happened. I mean, the last time was the, was it the Spanish flu in like 1919? And I'm probably going to get that really wrong. I'm sorry, <laughs> historians. But Something early like 1900s, that. like my grand, my dad's parents went through it, but they were even young. They were kids when that yeah. happened. Right, 1911, 1912. So, so right. can, I, can I can I chat about something funny? Yeah. Okay. So I posted last. So I don't know about you guys, but and I I'm finding out this is not just a boy mom thing. So Adrian, I'm sure you can tune or you know with this. <laughs> I posted last night on my Facebook page. Boy mom thought of the day. Did my boys fart this much when they were at school? <laughs> feel like your children are farting a lot like it's just a thing like it's just I think it's a natural thing <laughs> and I get it's natural but like I talked to I was talking to Jeff about it last night and I'm like um like every 10 minutes I feel like they're farting or we sit down and we still sit down every night for family dinner like all together and we yeah. do that even without the lockdown we try to do that and I swear Heath has gotten into this thing now where he's like three two one and then he just farts like I'm like <laughs> Like, there's a countdown now? So That's so funny. I posted this on Facebook, and I have 12 comments from people. So I even have, like, my our friend Amy, her daughter Abby says she danced across the floor earlier, farting with every step. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have another friend, Julia, that she says, I have pondered this as well. I'm glad I'm not alone. And then Jeff's cousin, Casey, who's a, you know, 20 something year old male answer. Most likely. Yes. This is just coming from experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then another fellow boy, mom, I'm going to say, yes, they definitely do. Uh, and then my uh, Leslie, well, I'll tell you, our manners have left the building lately. Yeah. That's for uh, sure at our house too. Yes. A girl mom thought as well. She's another friend says, Yes, I don't have boys, but remember, I was in class with your youngest four days a week. This is one of his <laughs> preschool teachers of Heath. And uh, my friend Julia says, after I mentioned about Heath doing a countdown, Julia says, we get fire in the hole from our five-year-old. Nice. And then, so as an occasional substitute teacher, my friend Michael says, I'm going to bet that's a definite yes. <laughs> Anyways, that was the funny thing that I happened to post late last night, and I was like, all right, I got to talk about this. So I don't know yeah. if you've been dealing with that, too, but what the hell? Well, I don't want to fight all day, so, like, I know I've let a lot of stuff go. Oh! <laughs> no, and we're, 
so we've always, that's actually one of the things that Jeff and I say, the key to a happy marriage is farting in front of each other. Like, <laughs> yeah. We have done it since week one of dating because Jeff has uh, ulcerative colitis. So there's just, he, he, his excuse was, it's not healthy for me to hold it in. And so <laughs> my thing was always, I, that's not fair. Why do you get to do it? But I have to hold it in. He's like, you don't have to. So since week one of dating and now Jeff will be, we're going to be, God, oh, what is it? This 12 years wow. married in July. We're still together. So right. that's actually something we write in wedding cards. Like for people we really like know yeah. personally, really, <laughs> you know, fart in front of each other. Believe. Those who fart together, stay together. That's funny. But it's just, I mean, but it's different when it's like literally every five to 10 minutes and going, what? I fed you. What? I know what I fed you. What is, what is going on? <laughs> well, I can tell you for my family, I, we are eating better than we've ever ate. <laughs> I have never gone this long without fast food, uh, right. without pop, without juice. Get it, girl. Like, I just, this, it just isn't a thing for us. And as much as I would like to think that we had that under control, clearly not because the amount of fiber that we're all ingesting, like real wholesome <laughs> fiber, we are just, uh, we are, we could, we could light a sail up ship. Like we could, nice. we could take off in an airplane around here. I got to open the windows just yeah. once in a while to let it breathe through. <laughs> so it's definitely the same over here at my house. Um, but I don't know if it's more the kids or me because I, I was like, had this thing with Andrew, like we can't part in front of each other. And like, that's for the bathroom, but it was basically because mine were so loud and ridiculous. I didn't want to be embarrassed, but now it's just like, fine, I'm doing it. We're all doing it. It's like a big happy family over here. Farts. Yeah. And uh, the other night, the other night, um, I farted before he came into the bedroom because I was just like, who knows what that's going to be like, you know, mine are very rumbly. I don't know why, but they're just very (laughs) rumbly. They come from the, from deep within. And, um, (laughs) Um, he was just like, walks in, he was just like, babe, what, what was that? And he grabs the, um, Lysol or spray and he's spraying around. He's like, that doesn't even cut it. He's like, usually I don't even smell your farts. It's just a noise. But that one, man, that one brought water to my, my eyes. Water to your ears. (laughs) Water to my eyes. Man, you're grounding everybody. Yeah. I know. I was like, I feel like we've been eating a lot of eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Eating a lot of eggs. Yeah. Good protein. Good protein. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I mean, it's a good sign of it's healthy. I understand. I mean, I have a gallbladder, so I understand completely when it comes to that. Right. I'm like, I have no gallbladder. I mean, maybe yeah. that's why. I just thought it was kind of funny, but... You know what? We're talking about it so much. Like I can smell farts right now. Like I don't know if it's real or not, but my whole family is downstairs trying to be quiet while we do this, and uh, I'm pretty sure they're just like sending up smoke smoke signals from the basement because now I can smell it. I'm like, you jerk! Just sending it up the long the laundry. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys, Definitely. so has quarantine led you to cook anything weird out of your pantry that you've had forever or like oh, yeah. you haven't had in a while? Yeah, I've actually been taking like leftovers of whatever we have ate before and transforming it into something else. So we had like some pasta salad and I'm making that into like an Italian um, like burger with a little mozzarella and some marinara sauce, like transforming it all. You made pot. You took pasta salad. Like, yeah, pasta, already like, had the pasta area of salad. Italian dressing and everything in it. Uh huh. Yeah, and, you and did, put more Italian it? seasoning in it, and some hamburger, and a little bit of marinara sauce and some mozzarella. How did it taste? And baked it. How'd it go? Yeah, everyone loved it. I've been making weird ass shit. That is a, weird ass shit. Okay, I don't have anything that can top that because, no. Yeah. Wow. No, I'm, I'm like, like uh, I'm I'm like embarrassed to say what I was gonna say because now you just like couldn't you have waited till the end, Adrian? To like, well, <laughs> what were you gonna I say, made, Melissa? Uh, Come on. The other day and made breakfast pizza with the sausage gravy. I mean, oh yeah, now that, normal. but that yeah that, but <laughs> pasta salad is that one you get and you go, hmm, what else could I do with this? 
Yeah. That was, that, well, you I had a lot of freaking gossip to mindset, it. Do something with it. I can't no. let anything go to waste these days. Oh, yeah, no, we, we're having, like, leftovers galore. Like, I'm like, all right, actually, we had, um, for Easter dinner, we had um, duck breast that Jeff and his dad shot uh, that's been in our freezer, and so I'm actually, I made more than enough, so I'm actually going to recreate that into, like, a, like, a Japanese dish, so I'm going to put, like, those Japanese noodles that we got however long ago from that gal from the yeah. historical society, I'm going to use those. And so I'm going to, and then put some like soy sauce in it and I have some hoisin. Like I'm going to kind of make a, that sounds good. you know, something like that. It, well, it's definitely not as crazy as what you did. Like, girl, I am impressed. No, well, I, I mean, that's awesome. We got a lot of time. We can pick the vegetables apart, like the little pieces of sausage out, you know, I love it. I'll repurpose the sausage later. <laughs> rinse it off. Oh my gosh, I put too much seasoning on my pasta salad and Ooh. I rinsed it all underneath the um in a in a colander. I rinsed it all off and started over again. So I'll just do that again with the sausage. <laughs> Be like you, Melissa. You people, crackers and crackers and cheese. <laughs> well, I can well, so this is I should I should have went first. Um so <laughs> This will let everyone know my culinary level of expertise. Um, here, about baby. three years ago, I accidentally bought a full container of um, steel cut oats instead of instant Ooh. oats or like one oh, minute oats. So they're like, oh, good. they're like little pieces of corn. I, did, I had no idea. I just grabbed them and they have literally, I have had these for at least three years. So, so they're full of maggots. They actually weren't. Thank goodness they weren't. I checked. I checked. Um, so I Googled a whole bunch of stuff on like, how do you steel cut oats? And one thing that looked easy for me was to soak them in milk overnight. One cup oats, like one to four is the ratio. So one cup oats to four cups of milk. Yeah. So that's uh, what I did last night was I soaked oats. And this morning... They looked exactly the same as when I put them in <laughs> last night. It did absolutely nothing. So then I had to Google uh, when overnight oats fails, what do you do next? And then it said to just put it on really, really low heat on the stove for like an hour for a really long time. Jeez. So I decided to do that. And uh, now they definitely are oat, like it's oatmeal and, um, but it tastes different than like my kids have only had like instant oatmeal, you know, oh, yeah. it's like it's better for them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. bring on the farts for sure. But yeah, I put butter. So it was made with milk and then I put butter in there and brown sugar and cinnamon. Mm. sounds great yeah sounds it was delicious. super good but it's definitely the whole overnight oats thing with steel cut oats total fail like so definitely. what are you gonna do with that milk that you are wasting that for oh I cooked it I cooked it <laughs> all I together it. like I, I just put it, it all in there and cooked it it did my saucepan did overflow at one point so it smells <laughs> like burnt milk in here so it comes up the farts for a little bit I say but... burnt milk still smells better than farts so I yeah. looked at the container, the container of steel cut oats, because now keep in mind, I've only used one cup. I've had this for a three effing years, and I've <laughs> used now one cup, and it was kind of a nightmare. I dirtied right. so many dishes, and I, that <laughs> I paid a dollar nine for this container of steel cut oats. So wow. uh, you know what? I just made breakfast. I could have never made breakfast for a dollar nine. I'm tossing them. <laughs> I've had it. I've had it with the steel cut oats. Like they have taken up way too much real estate for what they. Oh my goodness! You could have done so much more with those. You could have put them outside at least for the birds or some shit. See, I don't even. I will. I will do that. That's a great idea. That, we're gonna make bird feeders today out of empty toilet paper rolls. That's a great idea. Perfect. I didn't think of that. I would yeah. imagine they like the oats. Yeah. I yeah. Squirrel will. A lot of peanut butter. <sighs> Which is very hard to find in the stores right now. Did you guys notice this? Peanut what? butter? Yeah, peanut you know, when I did my quarantine shopping, I know this sounds crazy, but I actually bought five peanut butters and five jellies because I thought, like, if this really turns into an apocalypse <laughs> where we're, where we're like, 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 peanut butter and jelly is a thing, you know, like, yeah. in food. <laughs> well, the yeah. sad part is, is, like, Aiden has done his oral immunotherapy for peanuts, and his 
daily medicine is peanut butter. He has to have peanut butter every day. Well, he can have peanuts, but he prefer, prefers peanut butter. So, I mean, I do have peanuts as like a backup, but we keep meaning, I keep, every time we go to the store, I try to get peanut butter and it's always gone. Like it's I just, crazy. yesterday it's gone. And I don't want to go to multiple stores. No. I don't want to do a one shop and done. And we've been going only to our local small grocery store, BG's, so that, cause then it's just a little bit, you know, there's not as many yeah. people and, and they actually keep it pretty well stocked. This yesterday when I went, it was a little, but everything I wanted besides peanut butter was there. Was there? You might want to try your dollar store. Like those seem to be like nice little hot spots. You yeah. Know, since they have that small aisle of food, but I know it's hard cause you don't want to go in more places. I totally get it. Yeah. We're okay right now, but, and like I said, I have peanuts and I'll just yeah. be like, dude, you gotta eat them. Sorry. Yeah. But, yeah. How long do you guys think this is going to last? I think it's going to last into June. I think we're probably going to be stuck into June too. I So my neighbors are, I have, uh, I, my name, I'll just say this. My neighbors are Asian and they have friends in China. And we actually were able to talk a little bit the other day. I caught them outside, which I will tell you since quarantine has, has started like the lockdown where they don't, the governor asked us not to travel my neighbors have pretty much been in their house and they are very active people. They own a restaurant in town. I see their kids out playing all the time. And since this shutdown happened, I have barely seen them come outside. So when I saw them out, like, of course I waved and, and he come over and asked, like not come over. He stood in his driveway and we were over in our driveway and he asked how we were doing. And I said, good. And I said, how are you guys doing? And he's like, exactly what we expected. And I said, oh, yeah, why do you say that? He said, we have family in China. We know how this all went down in China. We, we knew we were already prepared. And I said, well, how do you think Americans are doing versus what you've heard of from China? He said, I think Americans are stupid. <laughs> I was like, why do you say that? And he's like, everybody in China, when they were told to go inside and not travel, that's exactly what they did. And for some reason, everyone here doesn't want to do that. Look at all the traffic on our road. And he pointed, like, oh, yeah. we have lots of traffic on our road, you I know? Think my road is busier now. I mean, yeah. I live on a decently busy road that's very easy to get across, uh, you know, Clio. And I'm like, what the hell? Where are all these people going? I, there's part of me that kind of, and I know that this is awful because they're experiencing something terrible, but the people that are contracting coronavirus now, there's part of me that kind of wishes that they would be more open about what they've done the last couple of weeks, where they've been, what they're doing, because a lot of those people I think would be very ashamed of their activity out and about. Like, yeah, I went and visited my grandma and I went and chatted with my neighbor at the grocery store. And then I decided to run to the hardware store because I needed a gallon of paint. And then I went over here. You know what I mean? Like, I wish they were forced to, to really publicly say what they were doing. You well, know? I mean, I know if it were me, I would try to sit down and be like, all right, where's all the places I went and who did I talk to? So right. or who did I come in contact with? So almost kind of like an STD. Like if you right. get an STD, you're supposed to call. <laughs> You know, but I mean, it's true. Like right. you get an STD, you're supposed to call all your ex, your partners. Just yep. in case. I yep. mean, I like it. It's, it's <laughs> practicing safe sex is just like practicing social distancing. A kind of, I guess, right? Like, actually, yeah, exactly. I have, I have to admit. So somebody posted the other day, and I know that you guys will love this. Um. A lot, some, you know, everyone's using the disposable gloves at the grocery yeah. store, which they have actually found it's better if you just use your hands and wash them afterwards Yeah. or hand sanitizer them because people keep using the same pair of gloves at multiple places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So someone put, for those who keep doing that, do you not realize it has the same effect as using the same condom over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so gross it's gross but it's true uh, no. you, to our <laughs> listeners out there please if you would not use the same condom twice do not use your safe disposable gloves twice like seriously all right your practice I've, safe gloving how many people have you seen pictures of on facebook they're taking them off with their teeth they're taking them off with their teeth <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just almost spewed my coffee. Thank you. Oh my God. 
Goodness gracious. Got yeah, doing this, you know, is like, you know, like I said, defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, yeah. I hope that, I hope we get through this. I hope that uh, America as a whole comes together here. I know I did read, we'll just briefly pass over it. I did read an article that Michigan, there's a bunch of Michiganders on Wednesday that supposedly are going to in-car protest, in-vehicle protest in Lansing against Governor Whitner, Whitmer because they think her restrictions have gone too far for the stay-at-home air order. And I mean, I just think there's probably a lot of views on both sides of that. So I don't think it's worth us trying to dive into it, but oh, no. that just shows you right there how divided we are. I mean, Michigan is the third highest state for coronavirus numbers. We should be like, we should just be hunkered down. Like you said, going to drop off baskets and staying out on the porch and not going in and Oh yeah, no, there was shaming yeah. each other or guilting each other when we can't get together, you know, and it's just, right. it's crazy to me that we're even discussing this because it should just be over by now, I think. And I think you're right. It's going to be June, all of June, at least before we well, get back like to I it. Said, my uh. daughter who lives in Italy. She's still bunkered down in her, I mean, apartment, which I know that it's, it's a town. That's they all live, you know, it's like a New York type of thing, but it, she's still bunkered down and they've been locked down longer, you know, a couple weeks longer than us. So yeah, yeah, I would, I would much rather this go into June and really get those numbers down so that we can really still enjoy our lives again, mm -hmm. instead of having to do this again for in six months or something right. like that. Right. Let's just do, you know, cause let's get it over once. Yes. And looking at the positives of this, like I have to give my husband a huge shout out. Jeff has been, I have been working more because a lot of all my business I can do is virtual. I don't have to physically be around people to do it. I like to, but I don't have to. And so I have been at this computer like crazy and he has, it cannot work right now. And he has stepped up to the plate big time and he started dad school and the kids are doing so much. Like, I mean, that's another reason why the Easter bunny brought the keyboard and the basketball who, you know, things like that, but they're yeah. learning Spanish like they're doing Duolingo, learning Spanish and all this other stuff. And he's been really on top of like their schedule. Like they have an, a 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. schedule with breaks, a lot of breaks in between, you know, but my kids have been better since they've had this structure. So I suggest if, you know, uh, you have a parent or somebody, but it's been amazing. He's been doing a kick-ass job. So those parents and people that are doing that, dude, good job. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, we've, we've, we've let the ball go on the whole school thing. Thankfully, the teachers are still asking for certain times for like virtual get togethers, which yeah. they're mostly just chit chatting and stuff. But, but it's so cute. I know. I know. I, you can definitely tell who your kids better friends are because they light up like I watch my kids watch the other kids and when certain people talk you see them like light up you know and I think it's adorable <laughs> but yeah the homeschooling thing has been really frustrating and kudos to all the parents out there that are just tackling it and making it happen because the Hagers are not doing very good with that but I will agree at some aspects like my business life I'm, I do feel busier like there's so much more going on I know. Sorry, Adrian. The your life is you have to be in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you it's really crazy. A, if you have, have a mail slot, I would put my fingers through. <laughs> people have asked me to do their hair and stuff, and I'm just like, I just can't. Like that's for one, unethical. Yeah. For two, it's just I don't want to put my family into that risk. Yeah. And it's just you know, I I hate saying no. I'm the one that works before my schedule and stays later after my schedule to fit all my clients in because I don't want to say no so uh yeah it's definitely a new thing for me and the homeschooling thing like yeah that I'm I'm not a stay-at-home mom I've never signed up to be one and I never signed up to be a, a stay-at-home like a teacher so this whole thing for me way out of my realm yeah, yeah. so it's getting all of us used to it and trying to come up with a routine and trying to get my kids to actually listen to me because they don't they don't normally listen to me so <laughs> just trying this whole thing out and um you know if we have to go till June to be safe then we have to go to June to be safe if we have to go to July or longer we, whatever it takes and whatever the governor says is definitely what is in our best interest so right right 
I know, and I have an idea off air that I want to talk to you about, Adrian, that might be able to help you a little bit get Ooh. your something another fellow hairdresser is doing, and I think it would work well for you. So. Okay, cool. cool. Cool, cool. All right, so let's wrap up this show with some good news. We got a big good news story directly related to coronavirus, and one of our Michigan own awesome favorites, Greta Van Fleet. Um, they have donated to five different charities, um, undisclosed amounts, which that's just who they are, that they don't need the credit for all of that. Um, uh, five different charities they have donated to, all related to um, COVID-19 relief, uh, all, the Feeding America, Heart to Heart International, Music Cares COVID-19 Relief Fund, um, East Room, and for our Michigan fans from their home state, they have donated to the Lansing-based uh, Food Bank Council of Michigan. So huge nice. shout out to our Greta boys who <laughs> went ahead and, to, you know, they have an album coming out really soon. They probably awesome. need every dollar for advertising, marketing, uh, studio time, all that stuff. And they chose to take some of their profits and, and pour it into the community to help their starving neighbors. And I think that says a lot about them. They're amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. Good kids. So let's just get through it. Let's get this over with. Right, guys? Well I have right. to say, I, um, I am teaching three times a week a work cardio dance class that if anybody ever wants to join, it's Mondays at 6.30, Wednesdays at 6, and then Fridays at 10 a.m. You can message us on Ladies of the Comedy Series, and I'll shoot you the Zoom line because I have a personal Zoom for that. It's free. Anybody can join. Um, I am taking donations, and all the donations are going back to the COVID-19 relief, so um, and they're going to stay local in Michigan. So if you ever want to join me with that, I have to admit getting my endorphins going again has been fantastic for my mental and physical mood. So, and I know Melissa has got some really cool stuff she's doing with the comedy shows. Yeah. Every Friday we're having live virtual comedy through zoom. Um, we're still making some adjustments to get everything done correctly. I believe we have it figured out now how to have you buy a ticket. And when you buy your ticket, you get the exact, the direct link for the Zoom uh, mm -hmm. comedy show, but we're still figuring all that stuff out. Regardless, every Friday, it's only nine bucks a household. You can go on Eventbrite and search the comedy series, or you can go to the comedy series.eventbrite.com. Um, and it is uh, very, very fun. We got a big lineup. We got a girl playing a guitar. Or actually, maybe it's a banjo. She might be playing a banjo. Um, we, we're getting some really cool referrals from some of our out-of-state comedian friends, and we're getting to see some new talent that we have not had here in Michigan ever. So it's really cool. And last week, we had people from Australia on. We had the UK. Um, we had Latvia and all different states on the comedy show. So this is actually something that I think might be here to stay, that like you want to talk about good stuff that comes out of coronavirus this might be one of them we might be having once a month or once a quarter a virtual show so our friends from all over the world can join us so it's been cool. it's been really neat but yeah friday 9 p.m eastern time the people in the uk 9 p.m eastern is 2 a.m for them they were up at 2 a.m watching the comedy show how crazy is that <laughs> That's awesome. the one girl messaged me and she's like I took a three-hour nap today so that I could be up for this comedy show I was like oh my god That's, That's awesome, awesome that you're reaching people across the whole world That's yeah. awesome it's super fun so we want to we want to keep it going and all of our doctors and nurses working the front line get a free ticket to the show so please message us all we need is an email address and we can send them the link for the show we would love to give them something you know fun to do so well, and I have to admit so two weeks ago we had um I was doing two zooms so I was zooming with some of my friends and then I also was you know we had the comedy show going so that we could see each other's like see each other's faces better <laughs> so it, but it was really super cool because so um our friend Jamie was on and he is a paramedic and right now he's distancing himself from his children so that he doesn't you know he's already in it he's, he's divorced and so he already has his own place but he isn't really seeing his kids because of all this and he really needed a pick-me-up 
Well, let me tell you, after that show and all of us laughing together and chatting and everything on our own Zoom, it was like, I feel like a completely different person. It's like this feel, it felt so good to laugh. And he, he was on last week as well. So he's That's like, awesome. he's like, I'm going to be there. So, I mean, it's, it's working girl, like helping awesome. others. And it's amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, whatever we can do to help keep our spirits up. And uh, I, those of you that are out there, you know, it's easy for us to right now look at you with our makeup done and and we're awake and we're on a you know social media platform it's easy for us to tell you like come on get out there do something but if you're struggling if you're having a hard time for as many people as we're losing to this horrible virus we don't need to be losing people to self-harm or domestic violence right. nothing like that so please reach out we yeah. have resources available for you um, we want to make sure that we all keep our mental health up high and, and yeah. in good shape. So this has been a fun day. It's been so great seeing you girls. It's so nice. Yes, yes. I miss you so I miss much. You guys. I miss you guys. <laughs> this has been awesome, you guys. We will be back again next week. Until next time, faith, family, friendships, and lockdown 2020. <laughs>